Hello and welcome back. My name is Eamon Killian and I've been doing a short series of tutorials on how to get started using IBM software. Uh, tutorial 11, this is part 3. We're starting to move towards um, some more advanced topics and in particular we're working with the APIs. Um, I usually program in PHP, um, so we're working with the PHP API and as you can see here I'm on the uh, GitHub repository for the software API PHP client. Now if you download that and actually uh, take that into your downloads area and then unzip it, that's all you'll need in order to communicate uh, to and from IBM software. So we'll install that in just a second into uh, NetBeans, uh, which is the IDE I'm using. Let's quickly catch up where we were because it has been, I think, a couple of weeks since part two. So we've, to date, built Tutorial 11 here, um, a, you know, a rudimentary website to show how you can white label in front of um, software so that you can, you know, have your customers log into your white label site. Uh, it could look like this, it could look like anything, you know, it'd be your site. Um, I've just taken this example, it's very bootstrappy look, um, you know, we've got the header, banner, etc. And I'm going to cover four things, show the account, show the users, show machines, and make a virtual machine that you can instance or an activity you can carry out just by clicking on this uh, particular menu option. So that information will appear here in the, uh, in the white area. Um, and that's what we're going to be doing in part three. So let's get one of them built anyway. Um, so let's bring up NetBeans. Um, and here is my tutorial 11. And what we're going to do is we're going to create the, um, or we're going to add the soft layer API library to it. So there it is, soft layer. So I'm going to control C this and bring it into my source files and just have it as software just there. So the next thing we're going to need to do is open up our JavaScript. So that was rudimentary how to make things move and, and flex and be dynamic and be a responsive web environment um, for our site. So we haven't actually done anything at the moment. So what we're going to need to do is add <coughs> excuse me, add in the first instance an event handler to this show account. So currently it's not a hyperlink, it, it doesn't do anything. It's just a menu option. So let's do that. Let's add a into our if I open up the index. Show account is a class menu item. So let's add an ID to give it some um, to give it some relevance. Let's say this is check account. Okay, save that. And in here, if you're not familiar with jQuery, I'm, I'm using jQuery interspersed with a bit of JavaScript here, but if you're not familiar with it, basically we can now address that particular ID by saying it's hash check account. And when you click on it, so dot click, um, it will run a function and in that function we're going to say well let's do something simple let's do alert um, clicked check account and this will just show us that it's actually working and that our uh, uh, jQuery JavaScript is actually taking that in so I'm just going to reload that page, so just reload it, and when I click on it, there we go. So it will now run whatever we put in here. So in here, I'm going to say that uh, we are going to call a function, uh, or we're going to call an actual program. Um, I'm going to say that this is this. And we're taking the attribute of action. So what does this mean? Well, 
This is the DOM element that I've clicked on. And this has an attribute called action, or it will do once we fill it in. So in here, we will make this into a form element, and then we can pick up the action from the form element. Equally, I could almost just say that this is, you know, an actual link. I could, um, I could say that this is um, uh, check account like that. And it will then go and find in the directory that index.php is in, it will find check account and actually run that program. So for now, we'll, we'll take the, uh, the view of saying this action and we'll pick it up as a form element action. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to issue uh, an Ajax call to our web server. Again, if you're not familiar with, uh, with using Ajax, um, basically it's um, um, asynchronous JavaScript and XML. So what we're going to be doing is, in layman's terms, calling the actual program on our web server, asking it to run, and then return the information, and we will then display that information into our, um, our web page, but the whole page won't refresh. It won't. Um, Ajax is great where we have um, a requirement to change what's in this particular DOM element, the white area here, without actually refreshing the entire page. So in the old days, you used to submit a form, off it would go, and your whole page, everything on this page, would be called again and reloaded, which was slow. Um, so Ajax speeds that up massively, uh, along with many, many other benefits. But like I said, this isn't an Ajax tutorial, so I'm going to get moving on filling this in. Um, maybe I'll do an Ajax tu tutorial at some stage. Um, so we're going to say this is a, what type of request is this? Um, well, this is going to be a GET request. So we're going to get some information from our web server. Um, two of the most common ones, GET and POST. Um, the URL that we're actually going to talk to is the URL we just identified earlier on with our variable here. This is an interesting one. I'm going to turn the, you know, the A in Ajax at the very start is for asynchronous JavaScript and XML. And what this would mean is that normally when you're using Ajax is you know, the asynchronicity means it will go and do things while you're doing other things. So it's asynchronous. And it will wait on a callback, and then you will use the callback when it actually returns the information. I'm going to turn that off for this because we are talking to an external environment. And just for the purposes of um, speed in terms of waiting for this to come back to us, it doesn't speed it up. What I mean by that is it will, our function, when we click, we will wait for that to finish and we will see the results. So I'm going to turn async off by saying async is false. Um, and then when it comes back, the success, we're going to run a function. And we're going to take into that function, that function, the response that we receive. Whoops. So what are we going to do with that response? Um, we are going to append um, to the results area. I think it was in our HTML. Yep. So here's our our identifier is results. Yep. So we're going to append the response. Let's do it that simply. I'm not going to do any, you know, you can pull things out of the response. You can ask for that response to be in a certain format. We could send it a JSON object, uh, so a JavaScript object. Uh, we, we could pull that response apart and do all sorts of fancy things. But for the purposes of showing the concept of what we're doing, we're going to make a call. It's going to do something on the server, um, and it's going to do something talking to uh, software. 
that's going to be returned to our web server and our web server is going to serve that back to us here and we're simply going to present it as by appending it in here so that will be what the success will be and then I guess we better deal if there's an error um, so again don't worry about what all these uh, elements are in a, in a further tutorial I'll probably cover what all these mean um, but I guess you can figure out from the last one there if there's an error this is what we want to do uh, just grab this in either case we're going to append the error yeah. and uh, that's fine Okay. lovely that's it so that will now go off and call this URL so we better actually um, oops I have one more thing I want to do I just noticed there I'm gonna return false just to stop it and um, the return false will stop it running the default form submission um, activity which would refresh our entire page so that's what the return false is going to do there right okay so now what we need to do is go into our HTML and actually turn this into a form and once we have the form then we can write the actual script on our um, our actual PHP script here which will go and call the APIs. So I'm going to pause it there and I'm going to open up the uh, PHP file.